Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to speak today, and thank you for sticking around for the final talk. So the aim of the Ontario Neurodegenerative Research Initiative was to identify early indicators and predictors of neurodegenerative disease. Between 2013 and 2018, we collected data on five disease cohorts, Alzheimer's disease and mild cognitive impairment, Parkinson's disease, cerebrovascular disease, which was defined as someone who had a history of a stroke, frontal temporal dementia, and ALS. And with these five disease groups, we then performed assessments in terms of gait and balance, genomics, eye tracking, neuroimaging, including MRI, a clinical assessment, neuropsychology battery of tests, including cognition and memory, and of course, OCT. We also, in the bottom corner there, you can see we have uh, controls. And that was from another study called the BEAM study, and it had the same protocol. We had a, a one- and two-year follow-up. So the objective of this presentation is to describe the Andre Retinal Imaging dataset. Eligibility, image acquisition, selection, correction, data correction, curation, and baseline results. So this is just to give you an example of the breadth and depth of information from our neurologists for each of the diseases. We have year of diagnosis, years after symptoms. And then for each disease group, we had metrics that were specific to that disease, as you can see here. So the eligibility for the study as a whole was quite general, but each testing platform had its own eligibility criteria. And so for the OCT platform, we did exclude patient-reported glaucoma, wet AMD, retinal surgery, or poorly controlled diabetes. The procedures we then uh, tested visual acuity, fundus photography, and three images of the posterior pole, and three images of the PRNFL. So then we excluded images. Uh, we first had our ophthalmologist review the images, the fundus images, and look for glaucoma or glaucoma suspects. We really wanted to make sure that we were actually uh, excluding anybody that could actually develop glaucoma. So we had a cup to disc ratio of 0.7, or asymmetry over 0.2, a pressure of over 22, or an asymmetry of over 5. And of course, we also excluded wet AMD or other maculopathies. We then had trained observers who, in consultation with the ophthalmologist, then would inspect each OCT image. And they looked for poor quality scans for start, so anybody with a Q score of less than 19 was usually excluded. But also maculopathies that we thought could affect retinal thickness and suspect confirmed optic neuropathies or glaucoma. And from that, we chose a posterior pole and an RNFL image, and we used the one with the highest Q score. Next, we um, inspected the boundary lines. We don't have to talk about segmentation of errors so much in this group, but it was really important that we made sure that boundary lines were delineated properly uh, by the automated segmentation. So a typical problem would be an epiretinal membrane, and sometimes we had to manually correct those. And so we had a group, we looked at all the scans, all B scans within the ETRS grid, and if we had to correct, manually correct even one scan of, say, those 55, we described that group as corrected. And based on that definition, we kind of had to correct about 80% of the subjects in some way. And then for optic nerve, it was about 26 or 27%. Next, the data was exported, batch exported and converted into CSV format. So we had nine values for the macular retina thickness and seven for PRNFL. That data just then went through a rigorous outlier detection process by our statisticians. And if they identified some outliers, we would then sometimes have to go back and look at those boundary lines again to make sure they were delineated appropriately. So this is the number of subjects we had with posterior pole images, at and we can see that baseline, and also one- and two-year follow-up, and even some three-year follow-up. We had baseline controls as well. This is, again, to give an example of the thickness. Uh, we, for this particular 
box whisker plot, we averaged all nine thicknesses in the grid for the posterior pole at baseline, and then the, the one on the right is showing PRNFL thickness. Now, there are so many studies looking at thickness in Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and there is overall um, evidence, even in meta-analysis and statistical uh, systematic reviews, that we think there is thinning in some layers, like PRNFL and GCL specifically. But for total retinal thickness, we aren't really seeing that much here. So the question is why? Uh, perhaps we know that our data set was from a really um, early, early stages of disease, and so that's another thing we need to keep in mind. So the strengths of Andre are that we have expert assessment of categorization of each disease group, but we also have expert assessment in all those other platforms that we can work with, gait and balance, speech, we have cognition. All those groups put as much effort into their data set as we did into our OCT data set. We have clinically um, cognitively normal controls, they also have PET scans. We have a sample size. We have fairly good, excellent longitudinal retention. And the longitudinal design means that it mitigates any confounders of retinal thickness because the subjects are acting as their own controls. We have standardization of testing across three sites with regard to eligibility and acquisition. And the image, the OCT images were uh, inspected at one site in Toronto. Future directions is to use within disease and disease agnostic approaches to identif uh, identify causes and markers of neurodegenerative diseases, help validate or challenge some of the discoveries from other studies, and to collaborate with the global scientific community. And I'd just like to thank everybody who was involved, and my co-lead, Chris Hudson, who unfortunately can't be here today, but he's, uh, we've worked together on this for about 10 years now. Thank you.